morning everyone we are back for formula drift utah second last round an early morning here and i just wanted to show you the sunrise absolutely views here by day are absolutely amazing but in the morning it's it's like you're in a video game it doesn't even look real yeah we're here we're back obviously seattle didn't go to plan but the team have worked on the car a lot uh, we had two mini tests, one straight after Seattle and one earlier this week uh, Just to double check everything that was giving us trouble in Seattle and the car has been working flawlessly we Made a couple of setup changes again to potentially help the drivability of the car for my style And uh, yeah, we constantly keep making small tweaks and every time I feel like it's going in the right direction So today is an early one. It's 7 a.m. Now we're just arriving at Utah Motorsports Campus right now. We have a driver's meeting early this morning before we go out there for practice in a couple of hours. They made a few changes to this track over last year. Last year was probably the fastest entry in FD, but it made the battles look pretty sketchy. They shortened the straight by quite a bit, ran a new outside zone. We're going over the rumble strip onto the extra tarmac on the outside of the first corner. Gives us a lot more space. Yeah, it'll be interesting to, to try it out. I feel like the start of this zone is going to be a bit tricky. It's going to be the same for everyone. So here we are at the start line before practice begins. Last year, I think the start line was about here. And now they've moved it way further up the track. They've also moved the first outer zone much wider. So it's kind of going off the track over the rumble strips. Hard to explain, but you'll see it in a second in the video. I feel like the start of the first zone is going to be very challenging for people to nail. Um, but let's see how practice goes. We'll try to figure it out and uh, have some fun. Just after the first practice session, got six laps in, so bang on target to hopefully get 12 laps. Of the 12 laps we can get in FD today, car is feeling really good, really good. Like start of practice and the first few runs were very sketchy. Uh, the first outside zone, like I was predicting, with the speed we're coming in, it doesn't flow naturally. So you have to kind of check up and slow off speed more than you'd like to to fill the zone from start to finish. But I think there's going to be a compromise with all the drivers uh, to potentially miss the very start of the zone and start filling it from like a quarter away into the corner because it makes no sense to get the first part because it's not in line with where we're coming down the track. So that's the most challenging part. Towards the end I got a really good lead where I was right where we needed to be and uh, had a great chase with Connor as well at the end. So I was happy with that. Challenging weekend because when you're coming down the straight, you have no visual references of that first outside zone until you're on it. So that's gonna be a big challenge for everyone. I feel like the first corner is gonna be a bit messy. It is what it is. We all have to drive the same course and uh, we'll just give it our best, so.
right, well, let's take a look at, at this um, more or less a battle here. So James Dean out in front, uh, Ryan Literal chasing him behind. So obviously in this case, Literal much further back, cuts a bit of that line with that proximity, but you know, for a moment they're mirroring pretty good angle. Is there anything else that you're maybe spotting in that that, that I would have missed or? Okay, so that's our practice day finished. Uh, we got nine laps. Yeah, nine laps, I think. So, yeah, it ran so slow. Like, people are hitting the cones every lap. Like I said, you can see the first outer zone. The best way to enter there is go slow, uh, which I see a lot of people doing when I saw some of the live stream. I was trying to go in there, commit it, draft one tire, like, on probably half of my laps today on the first corner, but I'm trying to go as hard as I can. It's easy, bring it back a little bit, but it just feels wrong to have to do that to fill a zone. You, there's no lines now even. You can only see if you've went off track by either hitting the cones with your bumper or looking at the live stream after and seeing from the drone footage that's sitting there in the sky and you can just make out where the line is. So, personally not a fan of the track. I'm not a fan of the adjustments they made over last year. I feel like, uh, it's just going to be messy and confusing. Um, yep, so Ben is ready for his seating bracket. So time to support him now and hopefully it all goes well. Fingers crossed we're both in for tomorrow. All right, hops in the Pennzoil Ford Mustang. And here comes Derek Madison. A shorter run up from previous years and going a little off course there, but that's the natural line. Nice job by Hobson. Again, this. This young man definitely uh, earning his stripes right now. Good run by Ben Hobson. Transition now to outside zone three. Boom, puts it right there. This is the Hobson we know. Yeah. This, this Ben Hobson is absolutely delivering. That was a solid run. So on a high note for today, Ben is absolutely killing it. He's in the top four of the seating bracket. Go, buddy. Woo! How are you feeling? Woo! I'm feeling great, baby. Your lead, your, uh, your lead is f***ing sweet. Is it? Entry is perfect. Is it good? Yeah, entry is perfect. Don't push any harder than the last run. I'm not, dude, That's I'm your limit. Not... Oh, yeah, I'm there so Just a bit too deep there. Oh, almost three. I know. Holy yeah, God. so be careful there. Yes. So just set yourself up gently at the start of every zone. Like that was serious commitment, but just a bit too much. Don't overdrive it and you got it. Feels every time I transition to that zone, you see my front end hop? Yeah, mine does the same. What do you do to correct that? Nothing, you just have to just be ready for it. Okay. And you have it. Yes, sir. What do you think? Hey, one lap at a time, baby. That's right. That's it. Head to the final. So practice on game day is officially kicking off. We are here, we are ready to go. They have made some changes to the track. Not changes, but visibility changes to the first outer zone. They've doubled the weight of the outer line and they put hash marks through it. So we'll be able to see it a lot more. And uh, I'm excited for it. So let's just jump in. I'm gonna be on track in about three or four minutes. Let's get it going.
So practice is complete and it was a challenging one, but not so bad. Three laps, we had nitrosolenoid issues. Uh, we changed the relay and changed the solenoid and seemed to fix it. And also I was struggling in the lead position on the first outer zone like I have been kind of all weekend, just to perfect it. Um, but on my last lead lap, I ended up exactly where we needed to be. So now I just need to do it in accounts when we're battling Ryan Literal in top 32. So feeling really good about the chases, had a great chase with Ben and had a great chase with Derek Madison. And uh, now it's just try to reset, have a banana and uh, team are looking over the car, final checks. How are you? Final checks. Final checks. You okay? I am. I'm ready to do this even though I don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, I know, standing around is even hard when you're trying to support somebody through it. Oh, this time of the year, towards the end of the season, obviously the pressure is building. We all want this, uh, we've all worked hard for it, so I just don't want to let anyone down. So, fingers crossed I can keep it together, not drop too many tires on our lead run. We're one of the fastest cars out there, so I just want to be fast on the pace, like big angle, big speed, big smoke, big commitment and uh, I didn't chase him hard, so fingers crossed it all works out. Let's do it. That's kind of an embodiment of his vehicle as well. So here it is, James Dean leads. And again, if you recall, even as recent as Seattle, he overcooked it in the outside zone one. And those are full throttle Ford Mustangs, and man, he is right there on that outside zone one. He dials it in, here we go. And look at the attitude of that car, lifting that front right tire up. Ryan Literal, he's right there, he is hanging with them. So a lot of eyeballs on James Dean, but Ryan Literal, oh, and he dives in on the inside. Unfortunate for that Sunoco Sim Magic S15. He dives on the inside, he does regain that position but really quick at transitioning to outside zone two. To car and said I hate the top 32 and it's such a pressure cooker situation isn't it it is especially a top 32 is hard because it's so early in the competition and then when there is like a five minute rule and you've done your piece and you're just sitting there at the line you know you're after doing a good run you're like oh you have so much time to think about not messing up and I just tried to play it smart uh, we had a great lead run and in the chase did my best and I'm so glad and relieved to be in top 16. You know, every point counts at this point. Uh, the team have been doing an amazing job keeping the AutoZone RTR Mustang running well. Uh, they put in a lot of effort ahead of this event, so I'm very grateful for that. And uh, we're just trying to gather as many points as we can. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy. I, I, I'm so, like, proud and grateful to be in this position at this point of the season. And, uh, I just don't want to, you know, throw it away. So fingers crossed we can keep it on track and uh, drive hard, put on a show for the amazing fans that support us and just do our best. And he is fighting for, in, in a dominant fashion, his fourth championship would be the first ever four-time champion. Here we go, James Machine Dean on his own Mustang RTR. Spent by FD, he wants to advance on and knock out Odie and maybe win it, we'll see. Andy Haley, he's gonna fight tooth and nail, going to that second outside zone, goes the Mustang. A little disruption there, a little the attitude. Andy Haley not backing down. A little bit of distance here between Andy Haley and James Dean in that last outside zone. Goes James, I mean, look at the precision. I mean, he is putting on a clinic using every bit of the tarmac here at UMC. I mean... Run with Haley, and uh, it's really hot. My lead run, 
it was a long time waiting between 32 and 16, uh, especially on this track where it's so easy to mess it up. So I had a great lead and in the chase after the first corner, I was down a noticeable amount of power, so I was struggling to chase him comfortably. But uh, it, just, it was just holding four gear, but not as free as usual. So Ray and the team are looking at what's wrong now, try to figure it out, and uh, yeah, moving on to top eight. So the championship is getting insanely close now. I don't even know what needs to happen or anything like that. But what I do notice is that there's cameras around all the time. So. Yeah, uh, Oli is battling Connor next, and I think a lot will weigh off that battle. So let's see what happens. I don't care, I'm having fun, and uh, anything from here is a bonus for this weekend. Of our grade eight, James Dean, Dylan Hughes. James, you know, he needs to continue on, um, but again, he's cool. Dylan Hughes wants to take him out. He wants a victory here this year. He wants to get on the box. James Dean puts it right in that first outside zone. Now transitioning to the second outside zone. There goes James Dylan Hughes. Quite, oh, James goes tires off. Throws up the gravel. That throws off Dylan Hughes quite a bit. As a, maybe, you know, to be honest, and there it is, like we said, as as he is the machine sometimes absolutely insane and that would be that'd be goat status baby here we go but dylan hughes the dozer who goes 202 miles per hour on the permatex motorcycle wants to take down the three-time champ here we go james dean and again Odie Bocci saying go dylan go as he goes in that second outside so whoa look at this so dylan hughes james dean gets to the door he spins out and some contact was made james dean this gets interesting. I, I don't want to. I don't want to assume that James was a little too aggressive. I want to look at this transition going into outside zone two. James, he, he can't go anywhere, you know, and again, he's on throttle, did, you know, I don't want to say he, you know, yeah, I, I'm not going to say anything. James is being aggressive, that's for yeah. sure. Here we go, James Dean, Dylan Hughes, is James Dean still alive? And yes, he is. James Dean gets the victory, so. Okay. Odie Bakshi, James Dean, leaving the start line. The championship is up for grabs, and it's between these two gentlemen. Odie Bakshi, let's send it! James Dean comes in, chasing him down to that first outside zone. Now transitioning into the second outside zone. Odie Bakshi's good composure. James Dean right there, maybe giving a little bit of inch. And here comes Odie Bakshi in that second outside zone, transitioning into that final outside zone. James Dean, he wants it. He goes into the dirt. He drops tire. Odie, Odie Bakshi.
Foxy's riding shotgun in that right-hand drive. Ford Mustang, are you kidding me? Did you breathe, Jacob? I am now. Woo! I am yes, now. sir. Oh, doctor. Look at James. When D. James came in, he was on his phone. You were checking the run against Odie Bakshis. What were some of the things you learned? Yeah, I knew that I just miscalculated outside zone two. And like, it gets a bit tricky as the sun is going down. But I was pushing hard. Like, Odie had a great lead run. So I knew I had to give it everything in my lead. And uh, I just. I knew I wasn't exactly where I needed to be, and I made a small adjustment, and as I did, I kind of just lost traction and just slipped off the edge of the track. So I was watching it back to see how bad it was, and, uh, you know, I, I'm happy. Like, Odie deserved it. He's showing tonight why he is a real championship contender and so deserving of a championship himself. And, uh, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm relieved. It's a great result. You know, I was happy today getting past top 32 because it's like, it's counting points and it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of highs and lows and waiting and wondering what's going to happen. So an interesting day, but to be honest, I'm happy that it's going to Irwindale personally because uh, loads of my family and friends are flying out for it. And, you know, Vaughn's going to be there, all the full RTR team, and hopefully we can take it, uh, you know, in Irwindale where everyone's going to be there supporting. So I've enjoyed it and uh, let's see how the final plays out. With the friends and family and Vaughn coming into Irwindale and knowing what's on the line, does that add more pressure? Not really, to be honest, because I feel like we, have, we got some great points again today. And it doesn't really add pressure. It's just having the support. And, you know, it's, it was amazing having Becky here with me today, uh, if it did happen. Uh, but I honestly never, coming into this weekend, I never even looked or thought about it being a possibility for this weekend. So I was always hoping that Irwindale would work out and we take it at the house adrift and, you know, you never know. So uh, we're going to go in there um, and just give it our best and have fun. <laughs>